Welcome to White Lecture Online. Now in this video we'll see some more similarity between the trigonometric functions and the hyperbolic functions. Of course, again, what makes it confusing is that we do use the sine, the cosine, the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant with an h behind it, just turning them, turning them into hyperbolic sine and cosine, tangent and cotangent, and secant and cosecant. So again, remember that the relationship between a point on the line defined by the equation x squared minus y squared equals 1, which of course is a hyperbola, we can see that the point there can be defined by the hyperbolic sine and the hyperbolic cosine related to the area in here that's defined by the point here at the origin, the point where the line crosses the x-axis, and the point x, y there on the line. And we realize then that t, the variable that we use in the hyperbolic sine and the cosine, is really equal to twice the area right here. So maybe we want to circle that so we don't lose track of that. So t is simply twice that area. And we can also see that if the angle here between the line that reaches the xy point on the line here and, uh, and the horizontal line, the x-axis, when that angle here goes to zero, then we see that there's no area, and so then when we take this, the hyperbolic sine and cosine of that, it's relative to the size of that area. So we'll see in just a moment how that relates. So here we have the mathematical formulas that define the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic sine. So again, t here represents twice the area, and we'll see in a later video how we can actually figure out that area uh, that's defined by those three lines. But now that we know that t is equal to twice the area, we now can define the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic sine. It's defined as e to the t plus e to the minus t divided by 2 for the hyperbolic cosine. And the only difference for the hyperbolic sine is that this becomes a negative sign instead of a positive sign. So that's hard to define, and you can see that there really isn't much of a relationship now between those two formulas and what we see on the graph, at least for the moment. You'll see that relationship later in a later video. Now where the similarities come in is that we have also a hyperbolic tangent and a hyperbolic Oh, 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 this should be the cotangent. There we go. <laughs> That's better. So we have the hyperbolic tangent and the hyperbolic cotangent of the variable t. Again, t being equal to twice that area. And you can see that there is a relationship between the trigonometric functions such that the hyperbolic tangent is defined as the hyperbolic sine divided by the hyperbolic cosine. And the hyperbolic cotangent is defined by the hyperbolic cosine divided by the hyperbolic sine. And likewise, we have a hyperbolic secant and a hyperbolic cosecant. The hyperbolic secant is defined as 1 over the hyperbolic cosine, and the hyperbolic cosecant is defined as 1 over the hyperbolic sine. And if we then realize the basic definitions of the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic sine, notice that the hyperbolic sine divided by the hyperbolic cosine then ends up being this. It would be this numerator divided by this in the denominator. Notice that the divide by 2's will cancel. If we then calculate the hyperbolic cotangent, we then take this and we divide it by that, and again the 2's will cancel. We end up with this ratio, and the hyperbolic secant, since it's simply equal to the inverse of the hyperbolic cosine, then you can see that you simply take this and turn it over, and that becomes the equation for the hyperbolic secant, and we do the same for the hyperbolic cosecant. So it all comes down to the basic definition, and it would be a good idea that when you work with hyperbolic functions, that you memorize these two equations right here. It'll help you a lot. So now we can see how we can mathematically define the two hyperbolic functions, sine and cosine, and then how the other hyperbolic functions are related to that in the same way that we relate trigonometric functions. And then you see later on how we will graph those and how we will use those in all kinds of mathematical applications. But that's how it's done.